What's up everyone and welcome to a special segment known as TFS Boost Fab. Everything you needed to know about the automotive performance fabrication industry. Now today we're getting busy on an Evo 8 forward facing turbo manifold and in part one we're going to show you how to get all the mock-up done on the vehicle and get it ready for welding. Let's get started. So we're just going to kind of get right into making all of this happen here. So in the interest of saving time, I'm not going to show you exactly how to get all of your car stripped apart and everything else made, uh, you know, set up like that. That's something you should already know before you get into fabrication. It's kind of hard to you know, build something for a car if you don't know how, how it works. So in order to do all of this, we're going to have to do a little bit of a pre-mock-up so we can set everything up because we're not building on a jig. We're actually building the turbo manifold on the chassis itself. So we need our turbo, which we have here fresh from the client. We have our dump tube that we made, uh, fabricated all of these in the pie cut episode. I also have a merge collector. Now this one I purchased, and I usually do that quite often because it's, uh, you know, they're very, very inexpensive. And it's a lot easier to build one of these uh, uh, by saving time by having one already made. So we will get into this in an upcoming episode. Don't worry about that. I'll show you exactly how to make them for different flanges and whatnot. But for right now, we have a purchased one. We have a long radius uh, inch and a half schedule 40 pipe. We have short radius inch and a half schedule 40 pipe. We have flanges, we have a straight section. We have pretty much everything that we need to get done here. So I usually start out with about 10 elbows for every single job and roughly two feet of uh, inch and a half pipe. So to get this on the way, I'm gonna set this up here. I'm gonna get my merge collector uh, tack welded onto the actual flange itself. And I'm basically just kind of sitting here and making sure that we have, uh, we have it centered, we have it set up, and it's pretty much right where it needs to be. So it's crucial to ensuring that we actually get the setup nice and clean. So I'm gonna grab a hold of my TIG here. We're just gonna toss a couple of tacks down on it. These will simply hold everything in place while we get to fabricating everything. Take our flange. I'm gonna make it up there with the gasket because this gives us a much more accurate fit while it's in the chassis during mock-up. The same thing happens with the, uh, the actual turbo flange itself on the head. And we wanna make sure that we get all of our fasteners on here and uh, snug. So that way it fits just about exactly like it's supposed to with the, with the uh, final result after we fabricate everything. So the purpose here is to get everything mocked up and fit exactly the way it's supposed to be on the final product itself. So let me get the rest of these uh, nuts on here and then we'll get our dump tube set in place. Now we're gonna toss on our dump tube. Now this originally was not fit for this setup in this turbo, but we're gonna have to adapt it and make everything uh, kind of flow together in the end because the uh, decision to go front face on this one was, uh, it was kind of a, uh, spawned out of a uh, fitment issue and the, the lesser of all evils, if you will, of uh, which one was gonna be the best solution for, uh, for the customer's uh, setup and his uh, wants, needs, and future uh, uses of everything. So we're just gonna have to adapt this and make everything happen in place. Now the actual downpipe itself is most likely going to need to be modified, but that's okay. We're fabricators, we can manage it. So we have everything pretty much all set up. Let's get it onto the car real quick and get it all fitted up. Okay, so for the car itself here, I mean, this is kind of needs very little explanation here, but in order to apply or build or fabricate a forward facing turbo manifold, we need absolutely nothing in the way. That means that the radiator had to come out, the AC condenser had to be uh, pulled out after the system was evacuated and everything else uh, that's in the way essentially needs to be removed. But the things that do need to stay, things like power steering, AC compressor, all of that needs to be pretty much left in place exactly where uh, it is in the factory. Of course, your oil line needs to be installed. Anything else that would normally be there that would typically be an interference needs to remain. But everything else that needs to go away, obviously, is gonna go away. So we've left this out of the video right here. Again, you should probably know how to do that if you're going to build something like this. So to actually get everything set up in place, we're going to need to actually place our turbo somewhere here within the engine bay. 
and that can be a little bit of a tricky part, but that's why we actually went for the full mock-up on the turbo itself by placing the dump tube and the actual collector in there. Uh, down below here, I usually place a jack stand or something that I can prop or set the turbo up uh, underneath and kind of get it somewhat in place. Or sometimes, you know, I'll suspend it on some wire. Uh, occasionally, I'll, I'll weld a, a bar or some flat stock to the flange to kind of get everything in place about where it needs to be. But in this case, it looks like I might be able to just utilize the jack stand. And we'll find out here in just a moment when I place the turbo in here. And I'm taking a pretty good guess on the height that I need to have it at. And we're just going to literally just kind of wing it here but these are the things that you need to pay attention to one of them being your height clearance which will have to put a couple of elbows and something in place you'll need to make sure that your dump tube and your everything on the back side does not interfere with the engine at all so your fore and aft placement needs to be pretty much on point we're going to worry about clocking later uh, when it actually gets down to the moment where uh, where we start placing everything and making our downpipe adapt to everything and since we are going to run an air filter on the front of this and build a shield for it for street use we need to make sure that we have enough clearance between the uh, compressor inlet and our intercooler itself for the filter that we're going to run in which case we're going to run a little stubby filter now since this will flop around and kind of uh, not get held still we need something that's going to hold it in place now this is where i typically grab some of my machine blocks and uh, other pieces like that that'll kind of hold everything up where it needs to be so as I just place it underneath the compressor housing here, it's uh, looking like it might be pretty stable for a, for a little bit, or at least for the mock-up itself. So what I'm going to do is check around the back side here, and we're going to make sure that we have ample clearance, and that everything is actually going to fit and be in place where it needs to be. Next, I'm just going to take a couple of pipe elbows here, after I think I've got it set right about where I want it to be, ensuring that we have and maintain our clearance, of course. I'm going to take a couple of pipe elbows and I'm just going to toss one straight up right here to see if this is actually going to fit underneath the hood. So, close it down. I'm going to set one up and I'm going to hold it in place. Let's close the hood here. Now as I peek down from the top of it, I can see exactly how high one of my elbows is going to go. And I can even put a couple of them together to see if where I have it is going to be good enough or if it's going to actually... Uh, uh, stay in place without interfering with anything and even uh, you know taking the chance of cooking the hood now if it is too close or if it does interfere you need to actually drop the turbo down just a little bit or reposition it later you can also uh, try clocking the housing to uh, maintain a, a, a better distance or a better separation but where we have it right now seems to be okay so we can at least get to work on this one now that we have our clearance issues sorted out and we verified that we'll actually fit where we need to go, we're good fore and aft, we're actually squared off with the actual head itself, and everything else seems to be on the up and up. We have clearance with our dump tube that we prefabricated or earlier, or at least on the other episode. Now we need to just kind of start filling in the blanks here. And this can be a little bit tricky for some, but you really need to focus and plan out your design before you actually get to fabricating elbows together and welding them all together. Because if you just kind of throw it all in there and be like, I think I'm going to have it this way or this way or this way, you probably probably find out pretty quick that either one, your design is going to be terribly set up or not going to flow correctly, or two, you're going to weld all of them together, or at least get them tacked up and find out that something doesn't fit. And that's not what you want. What you want is a pre-thought, well-engineered design, and there are a couple of ways to go about this. For one, a lot of people, or you see a lot of manufacturers, people, whoever the case is, that tend to actually pair their ports or pair the companion cylinders together. Companion cylinders being one, four, and two, and three. What they'll do is they'll pair them individually on each set of runners. So they'll pair you know, two and three right here, one and four right here, or the other way around, or there's a dozen different ways to do it. Um, other manufacturers will actually uh, set up the cylinders in the order of what the firing order is, so you get a... Uh, a, uh, more of a vortex created inside of there to actually encourage the uh, boost and flow to actually get in and out of the turbo faster which kind of helps spool it up a little bit if you do it correctly so you need to maintain a good runner length on both of them ideally you want them all to be the exact same length or at least the exact same flow rate or flow time so if you have two elbows in a straight runner versus one that's made out of like four or five elbows the four or five elbows is going to flow a little bit slower than the straight section will so that's another thing that you really need to consider so distance between each one of them and whatnot so ideally you want them all to be the same length now realistically uh, it doesn't always happen that way but either way you really need to figure out your design and work it out inside of your head now if you're staring at this for a little bit I've pretty much come up with a design that I want to do and I want 
I want a whole lot of uh, uh, involvement going on in here. I want to see a lot of tubes. I don't want to necessarily want the, the clean, you know, two here, two here kind of, you know, ram horn concept. I mean, you could buy one of those off the shelf, so what's the point of getting it custom built? So I'm going to actually focus on a little bit more of the artistic side of things and make it really look, uh, you know, kind of involved in, in one of those really awesome style, you know, twisted up uh, types of turbo manifolds because it's going to be seen from many, many angles and I want the performance aspect on it correct. So I am going to actually stagger into the firing order of the ports themselves. So the thing that we need to really start with is which one of these is going to get us a contact between the engine and the actual turbo manifold itself so we can weld it all together. And that's going to be runner number one. Runner number one is going to start over here off of cylinder one or port one and I'm going to send it right here to this first port on the back side which is closest to runner number one. The rest of them we're going to go three, four, and two all the way around. And we're going to start with one because that's a, probably going to be the quickest and easiest one to make. So I'm going to grab a hold of one of my elbows here. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to aim right for port number one. Or I'm going to figure out exactly where I can get it in here. Now I can clock this just a little bit or I can change the angle up only slightly, but the idea here is I'm going to try to come 45 degrees or so or whatever angle this needs to be, straight tube right into runner number one here. Now, a lot of people will ask me if I actually purchase or buy 45 degree bends. No, I do not. And the reason why is because uh, they are more expensive if you buy 45 degree bends or 45 degree weld L's or, you know, pipe fittings uh, than it is just to take a 90 and cut it in half because 90 divided by 2 is 45 degrees, which is what I have here. Now, this comes out of my cut pile. I build a lot of turbo manifolds, so I have a whole lot of a cut pile. I have a whole lot of pieces in between that, uh, you know, that I can use or go back to all the time so what we're gonna do is aim straight for runner number one and i think i have it pretty really you know, like kind of close but what i'm gonna do here is because i don't have three hands here i'm gonna use some pet tape now, if you don't know what pet is click this video card that's going to come right up on your screen here and check that episode out and see how really awesome pet is of a uh, tape or a tool that you should definitely have and check that video it's part of the tfs fast fab series I'm going to take this piece of tape here and I'm going to kind of gently just stick it on here because I don't want to disturb the location of the turbo manifold. Now while number runner, runner number one was probably the, tri or the easiest to build, it's kind of one of the trickiest to actually set up because you can't really disturb or change the location of anything. So again, we'll just put this PET on here nice and delicately, make sure that we don't mess up anything. With any luck, that'll stay just right where it needs to be. I'm going to hold my 45 here, right at the outlet. I'm going to take a measurement. It looks like we need maybe about five and three eighths of an inch, maybe five and a quarter, somewhere in there. This comes all the way up to five and a half. Now this can definitely change with the way that you clock it, but I think I'm going to go cut a five and a half inch piece, possibly five and five eighths, maybe a little bit more, because we're not really squared up here, but. I'll cut a five and a half and see if we can get it kind of close within there and then uh, see how well we do. Now there are many ways to cut out tube and pipe and me personally I like to use my horizontal bandsaw because it makes very light work of it with minimal cleanup involved. But if you don't necessarily have a horizontal bandsaw like I have, you can use a vertical bandsaw if you have one of those. Or you can use, uh, let's say, a cutoff wheel on the end of a grinder if you want to go the abrasive route. You can also use something like a chop saw with an abrasive wheel on it or even a carbide wheel on it at slower speeds. Now all of these work out well, but just make sure that with the abrasives, you have a dedicated wheel to stainless, okay? Same thing goes with your cleanup action. If you're going to do uh, any type of grinding or cleaning up or tapering the edges, which we need to do on a lot of these, make sure that you have a dedicated wheel for the stainless. So what I'm going to do is take my pipe here, this is my straight section, I'm just going to set it up, measure off from the blade five and a half inches, we're going to lock it down and make our cut. Alright, so I'm outfitting my grinder with a brand new flap disc that is going to be dedicated for stainless steel only. Now the piece is already cut here and what we need to do is actually clean up everything, make sure that there's no burrs in there, and then we need to apply a taper to it. The taper is going to allow us to actually get a full solid penetrating weld on each one of these pipes all the way around just as we should. Because remember, we're not bracing or supporting anything here, so the entire weight of the turbo over every bump, every launch, every movement of the engine is going to be supported by the turbo manifold so everything has to be exceptionally strong so let's get this cleaned up real quick
All right, so a nice little tip for you guys. It's been my experience over the years that is if you can uh, hold it in place and verify that it fits and then you uh, take it back off and uh, get yourself geared up and ready to weld and then you go back and try to put it back together again, it seems to never fit right. So what I'm doing right now is uh, getting myself all geared up, ready to weld, just in case everything goes exactly according to plan. So we're gonna set our 45 up here. I'm gonna attach it up to obviously the straight section here just as we intended to do. I'm gonna hold these two in place right about where they need to be. And we're gonna aim for runner number one, making sure that we're squared up on the flange just as we're supposed to be. Nice and easy fit. I'm gonna place that weld L on the end of there and make sure that everything seems to be pretty much lining up where it needs to be. Now, a little bit of clocking, a little bit of uh, turning and movement out of it will kind of help us get everything right where it needs to be, but where it's sitting at right now, we're actually pretty close. Now, I'll need to move the turbo just a tiny, tiny bit here and there, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. So let's see if I can actually manage to work this with only two hands. I think I got it pretty close. And if I think I feel right where I like it, I'm going to get my welder ready here. I'll drop a quick tack down. That'll hold that one section in real quick. Now I can work on the rest of this. I'm just going to clock and rotate and kind of twist it around and then see if we can get it to line up just right, right where we need to, and we'll start working our way down. It's a little bit tricky because we have to actually move the turbo with everything else and not disrupt any of the tack welds or its position or anything like that. It's very, very tough, but you gotta take your time and make sure that you get it just right. Otherwise, you take the risk of uh, having a huge gap that you can't see or anything else like that. So again, take your time, make sure you have it just right. And then each time, you wanna throw down another tack, right where you have it pretty close. Now typically stainless steel would be completely back purged and that's, this is going to be absolutely no different but for the purpose of tack welding we're okay just to run a few tacks and whatnot uh, in the beginning here for the purpose of mock up. So we'll get to back purging it later when we go for full final welds. Let's see if we can just kind of slowly work this manifold into the right spot. Hopefully we get it just right. It's pretty tricky. I think I got it right just there. All right, we got number one situated. I'm gonna do a double check real quick here to make sure that we didn't switch or move or sway or you know, warp or distort any kind of out of the way place where it's going to actually interfere with anything still. We're still not touching the block which is fantastic. That's exactly what we want. We didn't shift too far out of whack here, but I do know for a fact that runner number one is not going to stay this way. Uh, with the designs that I know I'm going to end up running with on the uh, other runners and ports and whatnot, it's going, to, it's going to need to be a little bit longer than this. So we're going to have to you know, work on that one just a little bit later and tweak it up uh, at that point when we actually cross that bridge. But for right now, it's holding everything in place, which is what we need. And now we can move on to the other ports. Now, here's the thing. Which one do you start with or move to next? That's pretty much the ultimate question here. So we can usually uh, switch over to three. I know that I want three to, uh, let me grab a couple of elbows. I want three to come off of here, tuck underneath number one, and then head straight over into three. I want two, because this is a staggered setup. I want two to pop up over the top here and go right back down to two. And then number four is gonna run alongside and go right down to number four. So, decision to start with uh, whichever one next uh, you know that's pretty much entirely up to you but I'm looking at like I might have some clearance issues running through here when it comes to port number two so I'm gonna get port number two done and set up and out of the way first and then we'll move on so for right now I'm gonna get my hands just a little bit more free here so I can easily grip all of these now I know that it's gonna have to go over the top we're gonna need some sort of spacing from here to somewhere in there and then I want to come straight off of the head 
And it looks like if I cut just a couple of straight pieces, uh, I might actually get kind of close here. So let's see if I can kind of set this up and aim accordingly. Might be a little bit tricky here. But just kind of set it up and try to eyeball and hold everything in place. It looks like I have roughly about an inch to an inch and a quarter of gap up top where my fingers are and maybe about an inch and a half or so the same on the other side. So I'm going to cut this top piece first. Actually, I'm going to try to hold that right about where I have it in place. I'm going to have my tape measure at the ready here. Instead of guessing, let's just let's just see if we can actually take a legitimate measurement here or something really, really close. Hey, you know, that's better than guessing at the end of the day anyway. So I'm going to hold this up here kind of about where it needs to be one more time. Kind of aim. Maybe give myself a little bit more slack here. I'll overcut it just a little bit because remember the golden rule, we can always take metal away, but we can't necessarily always put it back on. So I'm going to kind of get this a little bit set up here. Take a measurement here. That's about an inch and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to cut it about an inch and a half, and then we'll uh, we'll subtract a little bit if we need to. So let's go cut an inch and a half straight piece real quick. All right. So I got my inch and a half piece, and just in case it's just right, I just put a little tack weld down on there. Everything's fit, staying right in place where it needs to be. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our elbows, and we're going to see how close we actually line up here. Now, of course, we need to stay pretty decent distance away from the uh, valve cover itself. We don't want to interfere with that, catch it on fire, singe it, burn it, or anything else. We're going to take our other elbow and we're going to set it down below. I'm going to take a look here and I'm going to see how close we are. Now it looks like we have a pretty right on our measurement here, but we do have a, uh, these two pieces where this 90 up top here and this 90 down below where they would go to actually merge and mate to each other. You can actually see See if I can get this set up once again here. But you can see that we have uh, two different angles. They're not perpendicular. They're not going to be a straight piece that's going to go in there. We're actually going to have to cut down an elbow to get that kind of uh, transition in there. But what I'm going to do, just to make sure uh, that I can get in there with two hands and measure it, I'm going to have to put a couple of marks on here as references and I'm going to tack some pieces in here just to make sure that uh, um, I can hold it all together. So. Once I think I have it pretty close to fitting and we're not interfering with anything and I like my clearances, I actually grab a hold of my uh, marker here. And I'm going to put a couple of reference marks down. Put one right here. I'm going to put one right here. Now I can actually set these down and I can go back in with the TIG welder in just a minute and put a couple tacks down on those. Set our elbow in here once again now that we have everything tacked up in place and it's holding on its own. Now there is a bit of a trick here to get this uh, this transition because it has to have an angle on it and now it's actually without figuring out what the angle is there is a nice little trick to do here and I'm going to show you that right now. We're going to take this and we're going to hold these two up make sure that we're in line right where we need to be and the transition is going to go through exactly as if we put that piece in there. We're going to take this the uh, side that has the shortest amount of gap in it or the least amount of gap which is on this back side here comes out to about five-eighths of an inch. Now we're going to take that five-eighths of an inch measurement and I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. I'm just going to take an elbow here and I'm going to measure from the edge about five-eighths of an inch. And we're going to mark it straight across here. Place it into the bandsaw and I'm going to bring the blade down where you see it's just touching it. Now we can't cut it perfectly straight here because we actually won't get that angle. So what we're going to do is we're going to clock this and twist it just a little bit until we achieve an angular cut. So when the bandsaw cuts straight down after we clocked our elbow we see that we do have an angular transition and that's exactly what we need. So I'm going to clamp this down nice and tight and make sure that I'm on my mark. Kind of play with it here, make sure that I get everything just right. As soon as I got it, I'm make my cut. 
All right, let's slide it back up in here. Make sure that the elbow is sitting right where it needs to. We'll get our little transitional piece, our angular cut. Get it fit just right. Let's see how close we are here. We might have to do a little bit of trimming on it just to get it to fit just right. Uh, it's actually looking like we don't. Pretty much nailed it. Now as it sits right there and everything's perfect, let's just see if it just happens to go right back into place where it needs to be one more time after I get myself prepared, put my gloves on and grab my welder. So let me get that done and we'll get this fitted and tacked back in. Okay, so runner three, I wanted to loop up, go underneath all the other two runners and go straight into the head there. So with this, I'm just gonna kind of wing it actually. We'll throw a couple of elbows in here, take a wild guess about where they're supposed to go within reason, and uh, we'll just work off of that because we have plenty of space over here. I'm not too worried about running into any kind of like significant clearance issues or anything like that. So let's toss our tacks down on here. It definitely will be a little bit more difficult to work on just because of. Uh, being able to actually see where I'm at and gain access to everything, but that's okay. We'll figure it out as we go along here. That's really more about what fabrication is about. Sometimes you just gotta work on the fly here. So we'll get all these tacked up real quick. That should probably be okay there. We'll take a shot in the dark here and see where this 90 lines up. It's a little bit off, maybe uh, maybe a 45. Let's see. 45 looks like it straightens right out. We should be good to go there. Maybe I'll take this uh, this other piece that we cut off from the bandsaw here. Maybe this will actually uh, get us a pretty decent angle, perhaps. I don't know, I'm just kind of playing around with it here, you know. We'll, and like I said, figure this out as we go. Not 100% sure on the angles at this point, so so we'll just stick some fittings in here and uh, maybe we'll get kind of close here. The way it's looking from up top here, it looks like if I just have a little bit less than 45 degrees, then I can get a pretty straight shot going into there. But I'm going to need to cut myself a straight section here just to make sure that I don't interfere with runner number two. Now, if you remember the reason why I built runner number two first is just to ensure that we don't have any clearance issues with runner number three. So we're gonna have to kind of play around with this a little bit and make sure that I can get it around there. So I'm gonna grab a straight section and then hold it in there for mock-up. <clears throat> All right, so I went for just a little quick dig in my uh, in my cut pile here and I said this looks like about 45. It's really an unknown angle um, attached to a straight piece. So I mean, this will work out actually quite well since that's kind of where I was looking for uh, uh, for the right angle to actually get this in here. So I'm going to hold it up and make sure that I can aim for the port itself on number three. And at the same time, maybe I can grab another fitting in here and kind of toss it up there. And, hey, you know what? Maybe we can actually get something uh, fit in here. Now, if you didn't have this option, if you didn't have a cut pile or you're doing this from scratch or whatever, you would pretty much just mock all of that up in the, uh, in the right direction there and uh, try to get it all in place accordingly. This is just kind of a lucky shot, and I get these a lot when I when I do turbo manifolds because, like I said in the beginning of this video, I have a lot of uh, pieces and parts because I build a, a lot of turbo manifolds for a lot of different uh, cars and whatnot. So, quite literally, I have a whole big pile of scraps and whatnot. So, again, you can kind of apply the exact same uh, theories and practices that we've been doing for this entire video on a custom built manifold if you did not have a cut pile. So again, this is, you know, I wish I could tailor every single video accordingly, but I can't always do that. But what it's actually looking at right now is at this angle that I have it here, from all angles that I can see, it looks like I'm gonna actually nail this. All I really gotta do is cut a straight piece and uh, maybe trim up this, this piece right here just a little bit. We'll trim that up to, to straighten it out and make it parallel with the actual port itself. But at the angles that I'm setting this up at here, it looks like I'm actually going to nail that. So what I'm going to do is hold these two pieces together, or actually these three. I'm going to hold these together and I'm going to make a reference line and then tack them on there so I can hold everything up in place with, uh, and take some measurements and whatnot. 
All right, so with that tacked on, I'm gonna go ahead and actually make my reference marks here to kind of uh, square this up or get it nice and even with those ports. Because when I notice that when I line it up and I get everything flush fit the way it should be, I have this kind of a, a crazy angle that's coming in here. It's actually closer here on this side than it is on the opposite side. So what I need to do is make a reference mark to actually square it up. So I'm gonna make sure that down on the runner where it mates up to the tubes down here that we actually get a completely flush fit. Everything is dead on where it needs to be. And I'm gonna make a mark here to just kinda of square off the top for a good reference line. It means that we actually get it right where we need to be. So we'll get this cut out real quick and then we'll get the uh, straight piece cut out and get it all tacked up together and runner number three will be done. Just like I said before, we need tools that are dedicated for stainless steel. So I outfitted the grinder with a brand new cutoff wheel because it's the first time I actually have to use it. We're gonna use it to get this uh, nice and cut flush right where we need to. Now I'm gonna use the flap disc to switch back over here get this set up and we'll get it uh, deburred and we'll get the taper put onto it. Then we'll throw it back on there and get our measurements right for our straight cut. One more quick fit here. Once again, we'll make sure that our pipes are butted up correctly, right where they need to be. Hold this up in place here. We'll get a rough kind of uh, measurement out of it. Looks like we're running roughly an inch of straight piece that we need to get cut for this. So let's go cut out one inch, and get it all tacked up. Alrighty, now here comes the tricky part. We got our one inch straight section cut out. Set these up here. I already have the taper put onto it, everything else, we're good to go. Just gotta make sure that we butt it all up accordingly and correctly. Then we can get it all tacked in here and weld it right in place. Now, this is gonna be a tricky part because I got one hand holding two pieces together, two of them being butted up and all three of them, or all three connections are not welded. So you gotta get really, really uh, precise here. Take as much time as, as you need. We'll get all of this tacked together. Now, if when you're, if you're like me and you're kind of old school and don't use the auto darkening hood and you flip down your hood and you find that, or you feel that the pieces might have shifted a little bit, just Flip your hood back up, reposition, make sure that everything's good. We're gonna get a good solid tack down. I'm gonna double check once again underneath to make sure that my fittings are all lining up. A pretty big gap down there. It's just a difference in grinding, but not terrible. Let me get this tacked up here. That'll ensure that it does not move while I work on the other side here. Kind of out of sight of the camera, but a good, good line up underneath here. And there's runner number three. All right, so just the same as we winged it on the runner number three, we're gonna wing it on the runner number four. I'm gonna kinda hold everything up here. I'm gonna take a rough guess, just kind of an idea. Make sure we have no interference. And we're gonna send this one right up over the top, straight into number four. Now we're gonna try and of course utilize the exact same amount of bends and elbows that we did in all of the other ones. And the same thing with the straight section, so we get our flow timing just right. So I'm going to tack this on. A good strong tack on that one. Maybe I'll add another one here just to make sure it doesn't move. I'm pretty confident in my uh, lineup right now. We're going to toss this one down below. We'll toss this one up top. 
Let's see if we can find a way to get all of these pieces to fit together with a couple of straight sections. So once again, I'm going to kind of wing it here. I'm going to take a pretty good guess about where it lines up. I'm trying not to get in front of the camera here so I can uh, not block your vision so you guys can see all of it. But I'm going to try and set it up here. I'm going to get kind of close here. I'm going to take a measurement. And figure out what the distance is between these two. We're going to go for about two inches worth of uh, stainless. Looks like on both sides we get it just right. So about two inches worth of stainless, we'll get that piece cut out and we'll get this tacked up and hopefully we'll get it just right with little issues. Once again, I went ahead and tacked on my straight section here just to be on the safe side. Uh, just in case I get it just right. I mean, we can only trim down one side at a time anyway, so I might as well have it all tacked on there. So, again, I'm going to set this up. I'm going to take my lower elbow. And once again, I'm going to try and work around not getting in the way of the camera here. Kind of difficult. I'm going to set this up here. And looks like I'm pretty close. I can probably, I can probably run with this. At least that's what it's looking like. It looks like I can actually get away with running this uh, this particular setup. So what I'm going to do, just while I have my fingers tacked up here and holding everything in place, I'm going to go ahead and grab the TIG here real quick, and we're just going to toss a quickie tack on there. Maybe uh, maybe we'll get lucky on this one too. So just a fast tack to make sure that we can uh, hold everything in place. And now I can get a better look at it. <clears throat> so I'm going to come in here with my tape measure. And let's just see how close we can get here. It's like maybe about a three inch. That comes out to about two and three quarter. Let me see if I can clock it just a little bit. Because we have two different dimensions on each side, then we're running, a, we're running an uneven length. Or we're running an une, uh, a set that won't actually butt up correctly where it's supposed to be. So if I clock it just a little bit and I rotate it slightly, it looks like I come out with about a two and three quarter inch piece somewhere in there. So I'm going to cut roughly a two and three quarter inch piece and I'm going to see if maybe we get kind of close on it. Maybe we'll actually get, maybe we'll get it dead on. Who knows? You know, like I said, it's, it's fabrication. You know, sometimes you make it, sometimes uh, it just doesn't work out. So we go cut this up and we'll see how close we get. Alrighty. Last piece cut. Let's see if we can get this in here. Might have to do a little bit of trimming. We'll see. We have to check out these, uh, we definitely don't want any significant gaps or anything like that. We want to ensure that it runs, uh, butts up completely even on all sides. It looks like that's what we're going to achieve out of this one. And again, kind of a lucky shot, but a combination of, uh, I've been doing this for a long time and, uh, and a little bit of luck. So I'm going to double check once again. It looks like I got it right where I want it. Let's drop a tack. down below here. My apologies for getting in the way of the camera. Alright, one more on the uh, head flange itself. So that essentially wraps up the general mock-up of everything that we've been doing here so far. So what we really need to do now is take a look at it and determine what we can and cannot weld while it's an assembly. Because sometimes when you build a manifold, you'll notice that you get a couple pieces in the way and you won't have access with the TIG welder. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But I'm going to look everything over here and I'm going to decide if this is a design that I'm comfortable with and I'm going to go with or actually use in the entire, uh, as, as an assembly, or at least as it's complete. Now there are two things on here that I do not like. 
First of all, runner number one is way too short. It actually doesn't match or it won't match the pulse length of the other uh, runners that are on there right now. So runner number one has to be refabricated and reconfigured so that it does have the same amount of uh, tubes, elbows, and length to it as the other tubes. So that way it will actually match the pulse length because if we have our staggered setup here, this will flow or will pulse way too many times compared to the other ones. So it's gonna get out of balance and not function or form very well. So runner number one has to be redone. The second thing is we noticed on runner number three, there was a significant gap down below where it comes close to the head flange. I have to go back and actually redo that and refit that because that gap is unacceptable. So it's going to have to be remanaged or reconfigured off of the vehicle. So what we have to do essentially is look at everything, decide here, do we have access to every single weld as an assembly. If not, we have to cut tacks, pull the pieces off and weld them individually um, or sections of it individually in order to actually get all of this put together and then do a final fab on it. But the design that I have here and everywhere that I'm looking at it with runner number one refabricated, I can access every single point on here without actually having to take anything apart other than runner number one itself, which can be fabricated off the vehicle. So since everything can be done as an assembly off of the vehicle, we need to ensure that we do not move any position where we're at right now, because we're only held together with a few tacks. And the best way to do that is to apply as many tacks as possible while it's on the vehicle to maintain its position. Because when we start welding, it's going to warp, it's going to distort, and it's going to shift every single position. So we need to make sure that we have as many as possible on the vehicle as it sits like this. So that way when we pull it off, fit it up to our purge block, it doesn't move as much and we'll maintain our same space when it's completely welded. Now with all of our mock-up complete, let's take a peek over into part two and see exactly what we're dealing with. Of course, now we can actually get to fixing that runner number one and the runner number three gap, which is down here. See where I got? Ooh, looks like I came up a little bit too short on that one. to do is figure out where our wastegate is going to go now this is you ready for part two fantastic click on this video card right up here and we'll take it straight over there and we'll finish this up I'll see you there